welcome back to Beyond the Trailer's three-part look at the movie executives who can f*** with your fandom. Yesterday, Warner Brothers' Kevin Sujihara. Today, Sujihara's rival, Kevin Feige. And these men couldn't be for their opposites. Sujihara is a slick businessman from California with a business degree, whose family owns an egg distribution empire. And Sujihara started a tax preparation business before joining Warner Brothers in 1994 to manage Six Flags theme parks, then their home entertainment unit, and then finally run the whole studio with a keen interest in the film department. On the flip side, business casual Kevin Feige hails from New Jersey, moving out to California later on to attend USC and interning for Lauren Schuler Donner. Impressed with Feige's comic book knowledge, Schuler Donner made him an associate producer on the first X-Men movie. Word must have gotten around town that he knew what he was doing, because from then on he was involved in all the Marvel film adaptations. And in 2007 it became official when he was named president of Marvel Studios. A job that Feige turned out to be so good at that when Disney purchased Marvel, they left him alone. As they should, considering that Feige has built the third most successful film franchise of all time, behind Harry Potter and James Bond. Not to mention that The Avengers is the third most successful single film of all time. Only James Cameron has found more success, but he doesn't play well with others. Feige does, though, and is a welcome contributor on all the Marvel Studios films, often tweaking them up until the last minute. And while these days Feige has to share the creative credit with Joss Whedon, he is the one who had faith in Whedon in the first place. What other suit would have ever given the Avengers to a TV creator with not a single mainstream hit to his name? But now Feige has to be careful not to fall victim to his own success and to stay ahead of the game as Warner Brothers, Sony, and 20th Century Fox desperately try to catch up or surpass him. A popular saying is that audiences don't always know what they want, and Feige feels audiences don't know what they want to see as superheroes in space. We'll find out if Feige's gamble is literally on the money with 2014's Guardians of the Galaxy. However, footage was shown to a select few at New York Comic Con, and word is, is that it's going to be what audiences want to see. Still, Feige is also working to give audiences what they do know they want, namely Robert Downey Jr. After Iron Man 3 became the second Marvel film to join the Billion Dollar Club, Downey Jr. played hard to get as his contract was up for renewal and the fate of Iron Man was up in the air. But at the end of the day, for an undisclosed sum, Downey Jr. signed on for two more Avengers movies. Feige also blinked on Thanos, pushing back the galactic villain's cinematic debut despite a tease at the end of the Avengers. Instead, the Skynet-esque Ultron will be the villain in the Avengers 2, which also means more of another audience favorite, Science Bros. It's also worth noting that Feige has had his first failure this year since hitting his stride with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and that's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on ABC. While it was picked up for a full season, it's been losing viewers each week, and both the industry and audiences feel a second season is unlikely. Was this his own miscalculation, or did he give too much control to Whedon? No one's infallible, yet no one has more to lose than Feige. Is Feige the fanboy brains behind the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or did he just get lucky? And if he is the brains, is he having a brain fart as Marvel Studios tries to expand into TV? Don't forget, fans aren't too thrilled with Feige's animation efforts either via Jeff Loeb, with shows like Ultimate Spider-Man, Avengers Assemble, and Hulk Agents of Smash. Write your thoughts down below. I'm Grace Randolph, and this has been a Movie Bite. You can watch more right now.